Aloha and welcome to Holistic Wellness Revealed. I'm Letitia Sharp and I'm your host today as we welcome on Pavel Stuchlik. He's a transformational expert and really an alchemist in my opinion. So welcome, Pavel. Thank you so much. Uh, super happy to be here. So great to have you. So um, our discussion today is going to be about resets system resets and how you have found a way to be able to include movement breath dance um, meditation and sounds in a way to be able to help us find that system reset button and um first of all what i wanted to ask because i'm really curious i don't even know the answer to this question is how did you come to this like was there a catalyst that got you started on the journey to be able to find your this whole system that you've created? Yeah, so I guess uh, it's a catalyst of a um, crazy story. Uh, you know, I spent last 15 years traveling the world as an avid seeker of truth, uh, asking, you know, what is life? Who are we? What are we here for? And is this um, you know, nine to five it. Uh, and, uh, you know, I had this deep calling inside of me that kept on questioning everything that there must be a better way to to life. And so I, uh, I went on this quest. Uh, it started with, you know, samurai camp in Japan, uh, I spent some time with the psychics in um, Brazil, uh, I spent now uh, four 40 days total in darkness. So uh, each each year, I go 10 days uh, for no food, uh, no light, uh, to basically put this reset into a perspective, as well as I've met some of the most incredible mystics and teachers uh, in this search. And so I've been on this journey through self-transformation that led me to create this system reset toolbox. And so it is, uh, imagine basically um, all of these years of traveling and picking up on all of these different tools from healthy diet, nutrition, sleep, uh, mindset, uh, emotional traumas, as well as, you know, just a spiritual reconnection and putting them into uh, these events that we do now, uh, whatever it's lectures, workshops, and retreats. And basically these tools, they have a science to validate them and they're also easy and fun uh, to experience so everybody can actually use them. And so that's, that's part of this journey where it came about and it really was uh, from the dark room. That's when the tipping point for me to no longer just keep all of these tools for myself. I had to share it with others and, uh, and I made a whole life of it. That's great. So I guess I'd really like to talk more about that dark room um, because as I was sort of sitting and, and feeling into that 10 days with no light and no food and you do get water. Is that correct? Yeah. So it's not a complete optional. It's optional. So you could go complete <laughs> breatharian, right? Yes. Super amazing. So and so you've got 10 days, which may feel like a hundred, I imagine, especially the first time you do it. And so I do a lot of work with light and exposing light and also shadow and bringing light and love to our shadows. And it's it occurred to me that, wow, you're finding your shadow in the darkness and you're searching for your light within you. And you've got 10 whole days to be able to do that. Can you like talk to me or talk to our viewers a little bit about what that experience is like? Yeah, it's the ultimate reset. So, you know, it's funny. Um, I'm, I'm going to quickly explain a, an analogy. So if you have a computer, right? Um, you you can hold the the turn off or on button for few or more seconds and it's gonna reset right and if you think about computers they're like an extension of us right so when you when you have an iPhone for example in order for you to download new information new software new apps you have to be connected to the internet now the same way is with us you have to connect into the internet in order for us to be able to have this real true look at like what is working and what is not and you know the dark room is i call it the process of unhooking because we keep on living this life of what we think we want 
of uh, other people's ideas and concepts and societal norms. And yet, are we questioning, you know, is this what serves us? Is this who we want to be? And so when you go into a dark room, it's exactly these type of questions that come and start arising. And essentially, it's funny, the first three or four days is always about going back in time for me. So I go back in time in the year. Uh, well, the first time I went, I went back all the way to what I could remember when I was born. And I start thinking about, you know, what were the actions? What were my choices? What, uh, you know, brought me more abundance and happiness and joy? And what brought me more fear, pain, uh, anxiety? And I had this deep look at myself, you know, what have I done right? And who have I done wrong? Because I've also hurt so many people and it hasn't been this, you know, easy journey. It really was the pain that caused me to continue searching. And basically the about six, uh, fifth, six and seven day of the dark room, this is when you start seeing lights everywhere. It's crazy. Um, you know, the, the teacher thinks it's because of the DMT and because of our pineal gland, you know, clearing out. Because think about it, we constantly are exposed by blue lights, you know, everywhere around us. And so if you just detox from, from your dopamine, you know, from Netflix, from uh, social media, from emails, you know, that alone can make a crazy shift in, in our life. And it wasn't until day seven, then I just lost it. I start crying and I went into this beautiful place of peace. And for the first time in my life, I touched myself for who I was not who I am not, you know, until then, I'm not good enough and I'm not worthy of this. And am I doing this? And all of the clutter, all of the thoughts were finally gone. And then I had a choice to basically the next three days of the dark room. How do I want to show up and who I want to be when I get out? And that's when I created a Noah Aeon. It was literally after the first dark room that I pretty much sold everything. I was this busy entrepreneur that was opening all these Orange Theory fitness locations and I was burned out and I was happy and it, and even though I checklist, you know, all of the, the American dream, so to speak, that anybody would think I was unhappy and I wasn't living off of this beautiful place of service and, and passion that I'm living today. So is it transformational and resetful? Absolutely. But it's up to us to slow it down, to unhook from the daily life, from the daily busy mind to actually ask ourselves, who are we? Who do we want to be? Yeah. And, and I've even, I mean, I've been to a few of your resets and I've known you for years with these resets. And one of the things you do talk about and help people guide them to do is to reset from, to take that break. It, even if it's just from your phone and everything. So, you, and I love the way you, do you, will you explain to it? Because you talked to me about one hour, one day, one weekend, even a week. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So I kind of broke it down. So I'll give you a quick um, kind of a reference point. So part of the journey through self-transformation that I've been on, I found that there's really a four steps of this way. So think about every single life uh, situation that is uh, brought to us. It's giving us the option and the choice, right, to learn from or to keep on repeating that cycle until we get it. And we can either be in the place of victimhood where what is happening to me again, or we can be in a place of how did I create this? What thoughts, what words, what actions and choices have brought me into these consequences? And that's really what I you know, had to do in my life in this journey. Now, if you want to do the same, here is how you do it. So step one is the wake up process, the awakening phase where you gotta have a true self-assessment, what is working and what is not. And I like to imply it into the micro and micro cycles of your life. So the micro cycle is your me, yourself, the body, so your physical health, your sleep, nutrition, your diet, your mind. Uh, is Are you, you know, driven by constant thoughts that are just repeating the same cycle, uh, drawing from the past, moving into the future? Or are you, you know, having your mind working for you as this powerful tool for everyday life? Then it's your emotions, uh, aka your traumas. I literally had to wake up from what has really, what have I done and what has been done to me to, you know, open up that full potential of creativity. 
And then it's also the spirit, the cliche. I mean, we are a spiritual beings living a physical experience. And it is how do we get in touch with the inner hearing, the inner seeing, the inner feeling, you know, all of these gifts we all have, but we haven't been taught on how to use them. So that's the micro cycle. So you got to wake up and I'll give you an example. Um, you go to get your blood drawn and maybe you are uh, high on environmental toxins and low on vitamin D, right? So you've got a self-assessment. You're waking up that something in your physical body needs work. Then you move into the second phase, which is the cleanup phase. And this is when you would detox the environmental toxins. This is also, it can be applied to anything. You get rid of an, a, a relationship that doesn't work. You get rid of negative thoughts and emotions that are not of your greatest good. And so without you letting go of the old, there's no room for the new. Then you've got the third phase, which is the power-up phase. And this is when you know you were low in vitamin D, you supplement vitamin D. This is when you bring a new tribe. You bring new thoughts such as, I am powerful, I can, I will. You have this mindset that you're going into offense, which is a great place to be. And then the fourth phase is the rest up. And this is the process of unhooking that you were asking for. And so essentially, if we don't unhook from our phones, from our, from our friends, family, we're constantly living somebody else's life. And I like to break this down into a very simple you know, structure. So once a day, I spend one to two hours completely with myself. It's usually the first thing of the day where I don't touch the cell phone until you know, I'm done with this hour. And what I do is I do my morning routine, breath work, meditation, sound healing, and also manifestation. This is when I look at the day, what is happening, how do I want to show up, who am I going to meet, and all of the most important things that, that mean the world to me, right? Um, then once a week, I take one full day off. This is the day completely digital, fast, you know, no computer, no TV. This is time to create, to have fun, to have no agenda, and to restore. Now. Once a month, I do three to four days. And I'll give you an example. If you've ever been to a vacation and, you know, the first three days, you're kind of like, ah, I don't know what to do with myself. You're on the phone. You just can't drop in. And in the last two days of the vacation, you're like, I don't want to leave. I'm finally, you know, here. Like, I don't want to go back into the madness. And basically, it literally takes about three days to fully let go of your nervous system. So you can calm down and you can start hearing these thoughts and ideas that, Maybe we were too busy of overhearing those, those voices inside of our uh, brain. And then once a year, it's a 10 to 15 days uh, completely off. Uh, for me, it's the dark room, but you, know, you don't have to go to this extreme. This could be taking a vacation, uh, going to a cabin, going to a nature as earth full as possible because you want to use the elements. You want to recharge because it helps your nervous system as well. But most importantly, I always realign my whole year. I plan the year around. I can look back and what is serving me, what is not. And each time that I've been living in these cycles, it just made this huge shift where now I'm living a life that I'm choosing to live. You know, I'm no longer saying, I don't like this. I don't like that. Like I am choosing the life that I'm living and it's possible. And that's, that's the beauty of when you take the charge uh, into your own hands. That's. I mean, that's, that's a lot. It's a lot of information right there. And it's all so easy to ingest into my being. It feels like, oh, it's so natural and so uh, simple, yet we don't take the time. And that's enough. That brings me to another point. Like where there's so many of us just doing, 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 we forget to be. And that is this reset. That's what it helps us do is find our being again. And that's why I just love it. I want to move to, I want to go back on something. So you said, wake up and that's the body, mind, and spirit clean up. And that's addressing what you find when you wake up and then power up. And that is to, oh no, the cleanup is getting rid of everything, right? That didn't work. And then the clean, and then the power up is to reintroduce new things that are supportive to what you woke up to, what you want to be. So, where does breath fit in with all? I mean, I know we are breath, we are love, we are time. I understand this about our beings, 
where is and how did breath find its way into this reset for you? Well, breath is what you're born with and breath is what you die with. Now, what you do between the first breath and last breath is literally what determines the quality of your life. So I was fortunate enough to, to learn about breath with Wim Hof, with the Iceman. And about seven years ago, you know, I jumped into this cold um, retreat, which is like seven days of hell. You're basically, uh, you know, completely exposed to some brutal cold. And, and you know, for me before, I, I didn't like cold. Like, I, I didn't come in there as like somebody that, you know, thrives in this. But I was intrigued by what the possibilities can be. And so that, that was my initial kind of, um, you know, besides me being born and starting to breathe, uh, initial coming to the, the breathing. And basically what I have learned, it was so powerful. So I walked in there uh, mildly sick and I walked out of there healthy, even though I did everything against what, you know, society would tell you uh, when, you're, when you're not feeling well. And it was so profound that I went on a quest to learn about so many different breathwork techniques just to really understand what is the power what do we what, what's in there for us because if there is one teacher it is your breath literally if you just quit everything today and you just start paying attention to your breathing which by the way right now you know focus on a simple breath into your nose and out of your nose for about five and a half seconds on inhale five and a half seconds on exhale then relax into your body ask yourself where am i because we tend to be on our phones in the future, in the past. So you want to be inside of your body in a relaxed state. And then just pay attention to this. As you're listening to us right now, or as you're speaking to someone, it brings the awareness back. It allows your body to calm down from this overly stressful fight or flight state. It brings us back into that uh, peaceful rest and digest state, the parasympathetic nervous system. And Breath is behind every control, behind every situation. So think about it. You can either drive your own vehicle or you can be in the passenger seat. So when you let go of your breath, you just you do this shallow breathing, you tense up, you get into this anxious state over nothing. Sometimes it's just an email notification, right? So no matter what you do in life, if you can just relax, let it go, breathe through the entirety of your body. And if it helps, you can even imagine these shame pain like bubbles bubbling around your body and just breathe and draw through all of those bubbles not just your nose then you can be one step of the way to have your own um spiritual gifts to be relieving and releasing that's great uh so i've also seen so, okay so first of all the breath is so even just stepping into it with you what that looks like to people who maybe haven't had as much experience with breath as say you or I have, what you, you can even hear it, right? You can hear it in people's voice. You can, you can sense it in what they look like. You can feel it energetically. So having this breath throughout, I love what you said about the champagne bubbles. That's amazing. Bravo. <laughs> so you can feel it outside of yourself and it's almost like osmosis, right? You can feel the breath coming in through your skin even and into your bones. And that's just such a great tool. I, I love that you did that visualization for us. And I've seen you on videos with your on your Instagram and, and through different things that you even get your kids in cold, cold water with you, don't you? So you're starting them young which is so great because it won't be this thing that's so foreign to them when it's time to use it. How, how did they respond when you first started with that? Yeah. So, I mean, they're fully integrated. I mean, they, they tour with us, you know, we, we do about hundred to 150 events out of the year um, across all of the, uh, you know, major countries. And uh, basically, you know, they, they, they get hired. They have to clean and help us with, with you know, building the, building the experience. And, and that's, that's their ways to, to creating their abundance. But also, uh, you know, my little daughter, she, she's nine now. But since about, um, I mean, she was like four or five years old when I have some of the first videos. I mean, she used to be the example in our workshops. So she would go into the ice first 
and then everybody's you know mouth would drop and and then everybody's like well i cannot not go into the cold now <laughs> and so it's amazing and i also sometimes if they can't sleep i breathe them into sleep so they even they follow the same same rhythm same things that we would do in our events i just make it shorter and they literally respond to it incredibly well <laughs> Yeah, that's great. And I mean, we've even talked about having this for teens, for um, preteens and who haven't been exposed to this. But I mean, it would be such an amazing tool to get them before they turn 13 <laughs> or 14. Well, so that, right. You know, yeah. So, so sorry. What's what's crazy in today's world is the anxiousness and the uh, anxieties in, in young people children uh it's it's never been this bad and i generally think it's because of uh the overall stimulation of of ipads and, and iphones because when you're looking at the phone if you're not aware of your body if you're not aware of your breath just just try that anytime you literally your consciousness goes in front of you into the phone it gets sucked by it and you can get lost in it sometimes hours at a time without even noticing that you have a body that you have a mind and emotions and so again you know, the technology is great, but we got to know how to use it uh, properly. So you still can be in that breath, in that aware state. And when you give this to children, they don't have these tools, right? And so they'll start feeling iffy, anxious, they start acting out. And this is something really important for all the parents listening, you know, that that we have this um, this responsibility with technology. Yeah. And I mean, even if you look at I heard something funny from a German family of mine, and they said they call them the head down generation. And it's like this. And even if you do that, you notice there's no clear line for your breath. And you can't even breathe in properly because your chest is hunched, your shoulders are forward, your head's down, your throat isn't open. So, yeah, that's a really good point. Um, Let's talk about how the events happen. I've seen different videos and you're actually gonna do an event on the big islands coming up. And then we're doing an event here together too on Oahu. Um, and what inspired you? Because when I first started seeing your videos of your events, I didn't realize the capacity for transformation because it looks like a big party. Honestly, it looks like you're going to a rave and I'm like, wow, what are they doing? Are they, <laughs> are they like doing something extra? What's the, are they on medicine? And really, truly, honestly, the medicine is breath. The medicine is meditation. The medicine is sound. The medicine is um, movement and getting people into their bodies completely. So can you talk a little bit about how this all came up? Were you a professional DJ before? Is that also? Yeah, so it does come from rave, you know, to, to be to be fair. Uh, I was involved with the EDM scene for, for quite a few years until I, I burned out because I, I love music. I love producing music, but it it uh it it it's it can get really dark uh and it was not really what I wanted to you know be around. And that's really why we created our conscious rave. Uh, but uh, I, I don't want to call it a conscious rave because that, that's just a portion of it. But uh, basically, you know, what, what I found is uh, instead of EDM, we call it the BDM, breath, dance, meditation. Mm -hmm. And uh, essentially uh, what, what happens is, you know, spirituality can be this woo-wee-wow concept, but yet it's literally everything. That's our life. And so we're trying to bring the stigma away from any of, uh, of the things that might be keeping people away from it. And we're trying to really bring it into a, a as a way of alchemy. And um, what's amazing is your brain waves uh, can be changed and triggered very quickly. And ultimately it goes down to measurable things that happen in our events. So we've actually done a whole case study with, with scientists that had their uh, EEG um, uh, monitors while we were doing our session. And what's incredible is, first of all, the HRV or heart rate variability goes up off the rooftop. Uh, your nervous system gets triggered and, and calm at the same time, as well as your brain waves hit more of that alpha and theta, which is that group flow uh, slash uh, subconscious mind. 
So this is how we actually open up this opportunity for people without any medicine, but your own breath to do the work uh, very effectively and very quickly. And that's why, you know, some people, they forgive their fathers, other people, they get divorced. We've seen this before after our events because they just needed that, that, that big shift, something that was really obvious to be able to hear what are their, their highest, greatest good uh, for their own, right? What is the path that they're choosing to, you know, do? So, you know, even though it's, it looks like a rave, it does all of these amazing things. It's fun, right? It's exciting, but it's also very deep. And it's you who determines how deep you want to go uh, when you attend. Yeah, I just, um, I'm really glad that you, I had no idea you did those studies. That's amazing. Um, and it, it does, it encompasses all parts of you. And really what we're all looking for, Pavel, isn't it just to get closer to our spirit and our purpose? And that's how we find our happiness walking in these earthbound bodies with these heavenly energies coming in and our essence, right? That was here with us when we were born alongside our breath and alongside our love and our time and, and what we're made up of. I am just, I'm so thrilled to be able to share your events and to be able to participate in your events and also to be able to um, co-teach with you. It's a real honor, Pavel, and I can't wait for more experiences like this together. You just actually had a new member of your family born less than a week ago, just beautiful, precious baby girl. And um, Yes, Barry normally is able to be at the events with you, and that's actually how I was able to step in and be able to help you facilitate was because she was tending to being a new mama, new goddess mama, and you're on the Big Island, so you have an event coming up on the Big Island on the 30th. Is that correct? Tell me more about that event. Yeah, so uh, September 30th is at the Kalani. Uh, we're going to be doing this beautiful uh, experience with a whole bunch of local artists and tea ceremony. And, and we're really going to, uh, the next tour, basically, the whole theme is consciousness expansion. So we're going to be really expanding our horizons of what is possible. And then we're going to do the same with together on Oahu on the, on the 3rd of October, which will be using cacao ceremony and other beautiful medicinal uh, tools to, to help us uh, go deeper. And then we kind of go into the full uh, West Coast tour. So I'll be going to LA, San Diego, Seattle, San Francisco, Vancouver, uh, and uh, then it just keeps on going. <laughs> and then beyond, right? And all of this with the, everyone in tow. I love how you integrate your family into this process. Um, so many times there's a disconnect and there isn't a disconnect with your family. And I just absolutely, that warms my heart. Uh, it makes it very full <laughs> when I see that yeah. and witness that. So thank you for being a model also for others to be able to do this, to integrate their purpose with their family and with their ohana. Um, so Thank you so much for coming on. I look forward to seeing you in person next uh, in two weeks, actually, at Magic Island. Anyone who is interested, please go ahead and look at uh, noaeon.com, um, or you can also look at him up on Instagram. You can look me up on Instagram. We'll be able to point you guys in the right direction. So if everybody uh, could come and join us, we would just be delighted. <laughs> um, and also, if you're anywhere else in the world, keep an eye on this guy. I'm telling you, it's what's up. Thank you so much, <laughs> Noah. Pavel, Thanks, I almost man. called you Noah Aon. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Pavel. And um, I, I wish you blessed days in these first days of birth and also uh, of your new baby girl and with your um, already established children. <laughs> Absolutely. So happy to be here. And thank you uh, so much Dave, for what you're doing for the world and how you're opening and showing up on behalf of all the listeners. Uh, you're an absolute uh, ball of light. Oh, and you're a joy. Mahalo. <laughs> And thank you so much to also FinTech 
Hawaii for giving us a platform to be able to discuss all of these things that are so near and dear to our hearts and our mind and our spirit and for all of our sponsors and donors for making this possible as well until we meet again. Aloha. Thank you.